Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic. You know the score of how this works by now. You send in your questions and we answer them as best as we can. If you want to submit your questions, put them in the comments section down below and try to remember to use the hashtag AskGCNTech. Man on. Should we get into this one? the first one. First one is in from Mike Wallace. Hi guys, quick question regarding tubeless setup versus tubes. I've upgraded my wheels to set up tubeless ready and I'm considering changing to tubeless tires. I'm relatively low use on the bike. I have a second bike what I use day to day to commute. Will the change be worthwhile or will there be problems with not using the bike very much? Would latex tubes be a better option? That's an interesting topic of conversation. We all know how much I love tubeless I was, tires. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, so um, I think this person might be on the right track here because they don't use the bike loads, they might be best using the easiest set up possible and that the one that involves the low, least amount of maintenance is also going to be using inner tubes. Yeah, I would personally go inner tubes, less faff. If yeah. you were using it more, maybe consider tubeless ready, but no, I'd go yeah. I'd go tubes. Stick to inner tubes. If you want to have the super lightweight setup, use a TPU inner tube or a latex one. And um, I think that'll be the easiest option for you. Right. Next question in is from Mayori Bossignon. Oh, good pronunciation of that. I hope so. I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> I hope it's right, I apologise if not. Um, they say, hi guys, I was wondering if there is an encompassing comparison site for cycling helmets, signing with a database of all of the available helmets and you can select the criteria that you want to compare the products on. So that could be price, aerodynamics, safety rankings, or even consumer reviews. They say they've struggled to find a good way to compare all of the different specs. I don't think there is actually a website that has no. all that, but well, that would be quite a good website to look it at. It would be really yeah, just helpful. Tick actually. what you want in a helmet and it comes up. But no, I think you just have to look around, look what you want in the helmet. Do you want it to be aerodynamic? Do you want it to have vents? Do you want it to do you just want a safe helmet or do you want it to look good? Um so yeah, there's obviously loads of helmets to choose from. Yeah, so just look around and Yeah, take your pick. Yeah, look at reviews as well. I think quite good to look at. if it was me, I would decide on one or two characteristics which I think are most important to me. What's yours? Um I mean, safety has got to be one of the most yes. important. There's no point having a bike helmet that hasn't got the best safety rating. Yeah. And then I would probably say ventilation. Ventilation? Yeah, I think if you're trying to pick an aerodynamic helmet, it really varies depending on the type of rider and the position you ride in. Mm -hmm. So what might be good for one isn't good for yeah, another. Yeah, I'd go... I'd go safety and like style if it looked good. But then that all depends on the shape of your head because, you know, you, you try one helmet on that looks really good in, yeah. in the picture and then you try it on it looks like a potato on your head yeah so. actually interesting um, thing for everybody I'm going to make a video looking at all the different tech involved with helmets there is a lot of tech that goes mm. into helmets keep your eyes peeled for that um, next question who have we got one in from Kevin. Hi, GCN team. On the weekend, I did a ride on my landscape tandem, descending 563 metres. In doing this, the disc brakes got quite hot and my pilot said the dips, discs were becoming spongy. The brakes were becoming spongy, sorry. The brakes um, were They've squealing. They got really hot, yeah. Um, we stopped and let them cool down and then continued. The brakes continued to squeal for the rest of the ride. My question is, with the rotors becoming so hot, do they need replacing or do you just clean them? And they've gone from being shiny, bright colour to a bit of a bronzy colour. Right, I've got a few things here I've thought Go of on, regarding tell us. this. The disc rotors have gone that bronzy colour. It's just the change of the, the really high temperature. Not because they're rusty. They're definitely not rusty. <laughs> Um, provided the disc roads aren't warped in any way, there's absolutely no reason why they shouldn't be fine to use. It sounds like the reason that they're squealing is because the pads have glazed over a little bit. So when they get super hot, they lose a little, they sort of glaze over and get a shiny sort of surface to them. So what you need to do is deglaze them, take the pads out, rub them on a little bit of sandpaper to just rough the edges up a little bit, put it all back in, and you should be good to go. And Jobs hopefully, are good and your brakes won't squeal anymore. But I just realised also in terms of the the brakes feeling spongy, that's just because they've got so hot. Yeah. Um, and once they cool down, you should be fine. So nice. Simple. Next question in is from Lionel Brink, who says, please explain why, why using the big chaining and the large big cassette gear, so cross chaining, is inefficient as per the closing statement from a previous tech clinic. They say that they understand the chain needs to twist between the two gears and the additional friction from the links, but surely this will be gained back by using the fact that you've got a large chain ring and a large sprocket where the chain is moving around to reduce the bend. God, there's lots going on in this question. <laughs> it's going um, on this question. What, what else makes this inefficient and is it scientifically measurable? 
Also, I hear that cross-chaining creates more wear. Has this ever been measured? Also, given the trend towards narrower, so 11 and 12 speed cassettes, one by chains. Right, first up, there is a lot of things going on in this question. But the easiest way to cover a lot of that is to check out the video that we've made. Yeah, we made a video all about cross-training um, and we did a lot of different tests in there as well. So make sure to check that out because it'll probably answer all of your questions. Well, hopefully it'll answer most hopefully, of them. If hopefully, we, if we did a good video. <laughs> yeah, I, so I think in relation to you're saying about the efficiency difference between using the large sprocket and the chain rings, yes, it's more efficient to use the large sprockets and cassette, but the power loss that you'll get from the chain being at that really sort of wonky angle far outweighs any sort of small savings you get. So don't lose any sleep over it. Try to avoid cross chain if you can. Yes, it will wear stuff out, but it's not going to matter. It's not the end it. of the world. No, no. Just, just ride your bike and have fun. Exactly. It's the most important thing. Next question is in from Stephen, and this is one for you, Alex. Hi, Alex. I have a question about hills. I'm not sure why they're asking you a question about hills. Um, I've noticed I'm faster going down hills rather than climbing up. Same rider, same hill, same bike. What gives? Yeah, I can fully very relate. Very technical question, this. I know, I can fully relate to this. Yeah. I have exactly the same problem. I just ride down the hills so much faster than ride up them. Obviously, it's a little bit of a joke question they're having on this. It's the same with on any hill, isn't it? Yeah, same yeah. on any hill. I have the problem on all the hills. Ride up them, super slow, down them, super fast. Yeah. It might have something to do with that little thing called gravity. Oh, that's what it yeah. is. <laughs> I mean, oh. if you've got, if you've got I knew any, it was something. If you have any magic solutions to this problem, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to be able to climb much, much faster. Yeah, that's Yeah, next question is from um, Drag Brenau. Becco? God, I've absolutely slaughtered that name. Sorry about that. They say, can we replace a crank set which has a press fit bottom bracket with a new crank set and a threaded bottom bracket? No, unfortunately not. That's a simple one. Um, you can't put a threaded bottom bracket into a press fit bottom bracket frame. You have to stick to that original method and standard. That said, there are some types of bottom bracket which will fit into a press fit frame and then thread together in the middle you need to look at all the different types available to see whether they're the right width and the correct axle diameter for the cranks you want to use. Love bottom brackets. You do love bottom, love brackets. bottom brackets. Anyway, next question is in from Chad. Hi Alex, I have this retro aluminium frame set from my father that has a welded front derailleur mount. Unfortunately, the said front derailleur mount broke off and is now missing clamp on the front derailleur mounts won't fit because there is only a narrow gap between the seat tube and where the rear wheel. Is there any fix for this that doesn't involve a one by setup? Do you know the answer to this? I do know the answer. Well, it's a pretty easy fix. So a long time ago, they welded a front mount on, front derailleur mount on. Welded if you, one. If you can find an experienced frame welder that can do exactly the same, then it'll be fine. The only thing is that obviously welding a lot of heat, you will probably have to get the frame or that section of the frame resprayed. You could do that yourself or you can take it to a bike Painter. spray putter. Yeah. yeah, get a brand new bike basically. Yeah, I think don't overcomplicate. It was welded on the first place, weld another one back on there. You just got to find the right part, the right person to do it. Exactly. Cool fact, um, welding aluminium, you want to TIG weld that. I think aluminium is welded using AC current, not DC current. Oh, imagine if I said it the wrong way around. People will let me know in the comments. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Yeah, they would. Don't worry. Right, last question for this week's tech clinic is from Christian Schneider, who says, Hi, Manon, Alex and Ollie. I'm using SPD shoes from mountain biking on the road bike, and sometimes I want to rotate my heel inwards, presumably towards the, the crank or in towards the bottom bracket, but it doesn't feel like I've got enough room left to adjust them. Would I get more adjustability from a road pedal system? This does sound a little bit odd because you should be able to. Now, cleats can be a little bit confusing getting your, when you do adjust the bottom of your cleats, what way around you go to get your, get your heel to go more inwards. So maybe you're doing that wrong. Maybe you've just got a bit of solid dry mud stuck in there that you need to get out. Yeah. I don't know, what, what do you think, Alex? I don't think it's really a problem I've heard of. I'm pretty sure any mountain bike cleats, SPD cleats I've had... They're pretty floaty, aren't they? Yeah, they've got plenty yeah. of room, and I've always been able to adjust them so that my crank would, my foot would hit the crank, so I have to be mindful to not do that. So double-check you've got your cleats fitted correctly, 
And if you are still struggling, there are some SPD cleats which have a load more free float and allow your foot to move around a bit more, so it could be worth trying those. Yes. Hopefully that can find a solution to your problem. So that's it for the GCN Tech Clinic this week. Um, if you have got any more questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below using the hashtag AskGCN. Ask GCN Tech. Got a bit of a mouthful. Got it out. Yeah, got it out. Right, see you next week. Bye. <laughs>